Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me here at Macquarie University Observatory. I am in one of the control rooms, as you can see here. There's a giant telescope behind me and what I'll do is I'll just show you around. I'm going to take some footage of this observatory night and I will share my evening with you. So stick around if you'd like to watch this part of the video. Here's a picture of the observatory area at Macquarie Uni and I was in that little dome there. Now inside that dome is a giant telescope that the academics use to search for exoplanets. And on the night I learned what an exoplanet is. So that's a planet that orbits stars other than the sun in our solar system. And what we'll do now is we'll cut to a grab of one of the academics showing us how he controls the telescope from his impressive wall of screens. Where it's currently looking at, oh, yeah. and the oh, red oh, one's oh, where oh. we want it to go. Oh, and so out there it'll be slowing around, I don't know if you heard it moving earlier. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. big one in the big room. No, the no, other one. No, that's it's so it's just oh, it's so sad. We were here, and there was one there, and there was one just and standing there. About 15 bike minutes bike ago, it should have randomly yeah. started moving. And so now it's slowly pointing towards the red dot, which is where we want it to look. The yellow dot is where it's currently looking, so the mount's slowing it around. Then I stepped into the other dome depicted here, and when it was my turn to look through the telescope, I didn't see too much. I saw some distant stars, but they were just bright dots. When I spoke to the team, they said, come back in November and I'll be able to not only see the planets, but take photos of them as well through the eyepiece, which I can't wait to do. All in all, it was a great night. If there's an astronomy night somewhere near you, I definitely recommend it. For now, let's get back to the monthly. Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. And that intro was from an observatory night that I went to in early July. And then of course I became ill and then last month I didn't end up showing you that footage. I was supposed to show it to you last month and I ended up doing an audio only report. Thank you to those of you who watched and liked and commented. That was great, but yeah, I'm back now. So I will always be doing it this way. This yeah, last time was I think the second time I had to do audio only. I think I did audio only one time in 2020. I was very sick then as well. But that footage that I showed you at the beginning of the video was from an observatory night that I went to at Macquarie University and it was early July. It was a little gift Saturn in Aquarius gave to me. Now Saturn is heading, you know, is in Capricorn, right? So I won't be going out very much anymore. I will be at my desk. I will be working hard. I have lots of projects to do. And that's what we've got to do with the Saturn in Capricorn energy. But it was really great to be able to go and look through those giant telescopes. Did I see anything? Not really, because all the planets were underneath us because I'm temporarily here in Sydney, Australia. And yeah, all the, all the planets were beneath our feet. I will go again. They told me to come back in December and I would be able to look through the telescopes and see the planets. So that would be very exciting. And once again, I will take you with me if I do go. So let's get into the astrology for this month. Now, oh, by the way, before I begin, did I learn anything new from the observatory night? Interestingly, no, I didn't. I was hoping to learn all kinds of things, but you know what? I've discovered the ancient Indian rishis knew everything. You know, they knew about the tilts and the axes and the wobbles and the everything, everything. They've mapped it all. It's just incredible. So it goes to show maybe we don't need those big telescopes and equipment. And right now we're in Kali Yug and we're quite devolved. Our pineal glands are very small and not what they used to be. And, you know, we have to write everything down. We have to look up books. You know, back in those days, they were different beings, weren't they? Incredible, incredible. Well, we're reviving, you know, this tradition here today. So that's a good thing. All right. Now we're going to take a look at the astrology for August. This is a big month. This is a really big month. I think 
for the entire year. This event is huge. We also had Venus and Mars walking the night sky together and that of course was happening at the time, I think it was around March and it was happening at the time of the Ukraine war. There was a lot of tension, a lot of difficulty at that time. Now we've got a big month here in August. I think in October there is a square that's a little bit uncomfortable, Saturn and Uranus square. There's going to be another point to look at. We've also got Mars retrograde. That's going to be happening October all the way through to early next year. Mars is going to be in Taurus for a very, very long time through to about March. So that's pretty big. And I'm going to talk about all these things, but let's take a look at what's been happening lately. So when we take a look at the news, we'll do a little news matchup and we'll just have a quick overview of some headlines here and see what's been going on. So I think a couple of episodes ago, I said that July is going to be tense and the tension is going to keep cranking up, 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 up. August is going to be some kind of event or it may not manifest as an event. It might just be this big energy, you know, um, that's possibly causing all kinds of tension and anxiety and people are worried. People can literally feel that there's something coming, you know, can't they? I've been hearing this from clients, from friends, you know, from all kinds of people. So there is this feeling out there that something's coming or something's not quite right. This month, I'm recording this 18th July here, we've had political shakeups of all kinds. And, you know, this has been while Mars has been approaching Rahu and Uranus. Now, Mars has been approaching Rahu and Uranus at the same time Saturn's been going back into Capricorn. And there's a square forming with all this action. So this is clearly about leadership. And this is clearly about big egos, my way or the highway energy. You know, I either do it how I want to do it or I get out. And that is what's going on. But it's also like, I think people have been pushed out. So we've had Boris Johnson pushed out. We've had the Sri Lankan president, Rajapaksa, had to flee his country, Sri Lanka. Okay, so that's over economic mismanagement, right? That's, you know, he's been pushed out by the people. We've had the Italian Prime Minister Mario Draghi resigned over a no confidence vote. Okay, he's clearly been pushed out as well. We also had the event of um, Japan's Shinzo Abe being assassinated. So that, that was something that happened recently as well. I do think that all of these uh, top headlines are connected with this Mars approaching Rahu and Uranus. And at the same time, we've had Saturn going back, okay, into Capricorn, into dealing with leadership. So this is really interesting energy here. The last time we had this precise conjunction of Mars, Rahu, Uranus in Aries was 1855. Pluto was also there. And I looked up the events of 1855 and it turns out that there were kingdoms that were at war with each other. There was the Crimean War that happened at that time. So this is definitely big energy, big, potentially dangerous, you know, and I mean, look, it could range from from everything, you know, the, the range of what could be happening uh, is everything from, say, for example, Rupert Murdoch changing his headlines to, and I'll tell you why I give that example, to there being some kind of destruction or, or devastation. So the last time I saw this, with my own eyes, this Rahu Mars Uranus conjunction was the end of 2020. This is the time when I observed it and I observed that Rupert Murdoch had his headlines a certain way over many months. Then we had that conjunction happen and it happened on a particular point in his chart that's very, very sensitive. And he changed overnight, literally, he changed all the headlines in his uh, media outlets and ran pretty much the opposite headlines to what he'd been running in the months before. So 
you know, that is an example of an event that can happen at the time of this conjunction. So it could be something like that. It could be more leaders being pushed out of their posts. That seems to be quite a trend at the moment. It could be something more than that. Okay, so let's take a closer look at this conjunction. It is known as Angarak Yoga. Okay, Angarak Yoga, right? I've got Mars, Rahu, Uranus all conjunct on the 2nd of August in Aries. Okay, so Aries is the head, it's the physical body. It is, you know, this is Mars, this is the god of war. This is ego, this is my way or the highway. I'm doing it like this, I don't care what you think. This is also all happening in Bharani Nakshatra. The Ayurvedic dosha here is Pitta, it's fire. So there is some fire energy here as well. That's why I say it could potentially be dangerous as well. We've got Yama, the god of death here with Bharani Nakshatra. Bharani is lauded by Venus, uh, which is also important because remember during the Ukraine war, we had Mars and Venus walking the night sky together in March. Okay. Um, but that was in Capricorn where Mars was exalted. Mars was very strong. Pluto was also there, okay? So that was more intense, I would say, than what's going on right now. This is about, yeah, I've got here ego, control, and power. Control, definitely, Aries, I'm in control, right? And, and Aries, you know, and that, that's in contrast. I've been studying Mars a lot because I'm going to be doing a Mars, a troubleshooting Mars video, which should be coming out this week. And one of the things I've been looking at is how you know, Mars is the Lord of Aries, Mars is also the Lord of Scorpio. It's amazing how in Aries, Mars is I'm in control. And in Scorpio, Mars, it can be sometimes I'm out of control, right? It is so interesting to study Mars. Mars is really fascinating. So that's what's happening there with the Angarak Yog. Very important event early August, which I believe we are feeling in the lead up, okay? All the month of July, we are feeling this energy. What else do we have going on in the sky? Well, we've got Jupiter becoming more confident. Jupiter is throwing fifth, fifth aspect on the sun in Cancer. Okay, giving some wisdom there to the sun in Cancer. Sun in Cancer is very much about leadership as well. Sun is opposed to Saturn there. One of the ways I'm reading this is that people want justice. Okay, people more and more and more want justice. We have protests. We saw what happened in Sri Lanka. All the people turning up, right? People want justice. This is so clear. But Saturn is throwing a third aspect on Jupiter, restricting the growth. Okay, so I do see kind of Jupiter being there in Pisces, you know, the all is one, humanity is together, Jupiter is building up steam as he comes closer to his exaltation point of Cancer. Jupiter, justice is starting to come back in the world, it really is. Just today I watched a video by Monica Smith. She is an Australian freedom fighter whose charges have all been dropped right? Incredible. I was so happy. The charges against her have been dropped. She had to spend, I think it was 22 nights in prison, something like that. Um, we've currently got another Australian freedom fighter, Ozzy Cossack, in prison as well, which is awful. You know, he doesn't deserve that. Um, but justice is starting to happen again. But there are delays on this. Saturn is throwing his third aspect on Jupiter, right? The, the powers that are in charge are tightening their controls, okay? And they're trying for what they can get. Mars in own house wants to break down, to break through. Mars in own house with Rahu, with Uranus could be a bit destructive. It could be, you know, um, shakeups, breakdowns, breakthroughs, all this kind of thing. Government just seems to be dismantling itself by being irrelevant, you know, sometimes like some of the things that they're debating about and wasting time over it just, oh my gosh, it's like, really? Anyway, let's keep going here. I will be talking about that. We'll get to the ideological clash when I talk about Jupiter and Venus. That's coming. 
Let's have a look what I've got here. Mars in Taurus. Yes, this is the big energy. Okay, we, we are now going to experience Mars in Taurus. And I'm going to talk about that for every single mini report. So we're all going to take a look at where this is happening for us individually. But collectively, this is really big. Mars in Taurus is going to be there for ages. I think at some point he will go forward into Gemini, but then he's very quickly going to dip back, retrograde into Taurus again and stay there till you know now let's have a look at this we have mars retrograde october through january 2023 and then he leaves taurus in march 2023 mars is in taurus for ages and what do i think this is going to be about i really think this is going to be about money i think this is going to be about monetary systems financial systems how we do money I've got here, Mars in Taurus wants to be in control of money. Money systems, changes in money will be in focus for the rest of the year. Now, again, what is this? Like, is this going to be some kind of back end change that we don't notice? Or is this going to be the introduction of something new? Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but what I know is that Mars in Taurus should have some, something significant to do with money. I've got here at the heart of all disputes from now until the end of the year, and this could be disputes, this could be arguments, this could be warlike energy, but you know, any problems that we're having in the world, at the heart of all these disputes, it will be money, which it typically is anyway. I watched a documentary some time ago called War is a Racket, which basically states that, you know, it's a giant business. Um, I, I just watched the documentary. I don't know too much about these things. But um, what I am seeing here is also Mars in Taurus. It is physical resources. It's food. We're looking at food. So how we do food, how we deal with food, how we, you know, um, yeah, how, how we produce food, get food out to people, food shortages, all this kind of thing. So food is in here as well. Money, it is our resources, it is our stuff. It's our physical stuff, you know. Um, I've been seeing reports of, and this is just really trivial, but it's, it's physical earth, right? So this is trivial. People are flying abroad and they're not getting their suitcases. This is a big thing right now. And I know they're really trying to put people off from traveling. But wow, they're, they're using every single way they can to, to stop people from traveling. This is, this is quite a thing. Fuel, of course, cars, physical resources, physical stuff. This is all going to continue to be in focus in a really big way. What about all the other planets? What's going on with all the other planets? So we've got Jupiter casting aspect on Venus in Cancer. Now this goes from 7th August to 31st August. So this is a big energy this month. Venus is a little bit uncomfortable here. I, I get the sense she's not really liking this too much. Uh, you know, she's okay there in Cancer, but it's not ideal. Uh, and receiving that Jupiter aspect, uh, yeah, again, this is not ideal either. So I, I kind of feel like there's going to be little diplomacy in the world. Definitely across August, no diplomacy, no diplomatic niceties, energy, none of that. There's a lot of strong male masculine leadership energy about clashing egos, my way or the highway. This is big energy, right? We're going to have Saturn in own house in August. We're going to have Mars in own house okay, for a lot of August. And at the end of August, we're going to have Sun in own house in Leo. So there's a lot of masculine energy. I know, you know, Venus, poor Venus is receiving aspect from Jupiter, another very masculine energy there. Ju Jupiter, of course, knows everything. But, you know, Venus is wise too, right? They're both counselors. They're both equals. So what I've got here is a note that there's going to be an ideological, there, there are going to be ideological disputes around leadership something to do with some of the battles that are going on are to do with wisdom are to do with how should we do things people are just not going to see eye to eye and the funny thing is i kind of sense that jupiter's right and venus is right it's like it's not like one of them is wrong 
And when I was studying this, this is what got me thinking about how, and I was watching a clip of uh, politics in America, and they're debating about what is a woman. And I'm just thinking, what is going on in the world? Like, how how is that a thing now? Like, when since when is that a question? Shouldn't governments and people at the top be concerned about things like how do we feed everyone and how do we house everyone and how do we you know make society function smoother and what is going on so yeah it's and that, that's why earlier I was saying that governments are accelerating their own demise you know by not doing the work they should be doing right uh, you know it's craziness going on out there we know that <laughs> um, Saturn's casting aspect on Jupiter yeah, a lot of humanity is ready to go forward. A lot of humanity is ready to evolve. A lot of humanity is ready to grow. You know, we know what's going on. We know and we see everything. But there's restricted growth for humanity. And, and that energy is not going to disappear. And we're not going to forget, you know. And, and Saturn in Aquarius is coming. And that's the time for the people. The spotlight will go from being, you know, in Capricorn on the leaders who are making too many rules. And that's what happens in Capricorn. Too many rules. Aquarius comes along and it's all about let's break down those rules. We've had too many, you know, and, and there's going to be a balance created. So that is going to happen at the start of next year. We're going to see that more and more and more, but we, we've had a good taste of it even now. And Saturn is in his own two houses, so both of those houses are kind of active. So we've seen a lot of protests even since 2020. Now Mercury, 21st August onwards, is in Virgo. This is actually really great energy for strategizing. Um, Mercury retrogrades in September. But we've got some really nice Mercury energy here. And one of the things I think this might do is it might stabilize governments a bit and it might get governments to start to pull their acts together for a little while. So yes, we've got all this instability and you know things are breaking down, but I actually think Mercury might come along and bring us some stability. So that's 21st August onwards. And then, of course, we've got this interesting full moon on the 12th of August in Capricorn. Often I don't read uh, the moon in a collective sense, but I am this time. The 12th of August, we've got moon with Saturn. So it's a full moon with Saturn there. So I'm thinking that some huge truth could be revealed at this time. Again, I don't know what that is, but something really big and something to do with leadership. Okay, so we might see some illumination of something on the world stage. Who knows? Now, personally, how are you going to feel these energies of, you know, Mars, Rahu, Uranus? Well, this strong Mars energy in Aries, as I said earlier, this is the physical body. This is also the head. Okay, so if you are prone to headaches or um, you have some blood pressure issues, I would say please do take extra care at this time. Uh, and especially if you're in a part of the world where it's really hot right now. Yeah, there's a lot of, um, I was looking at the weather in London and oh my goodness, I haven't seen numbers like that. So please take care wherever you are in the world. This is, you know, the 2nd of August is a time to take care. Okay, so it's a time to take care with travel. I've probably got some of those notes coming up. Yeah, uh, travel plans can change on a dime. Yep, flights can be cancelled, luggage can be lost, put two luggage tags i don't know do, do what you can if i had to travel at this time i'd be putting two luggage tags i'd be i don't know getting extra printouts of luggage receipts or whatever you do just really look after that stuff the other thing that we can experience personally is there could be a lot of snap decisions um, sudden changes people losing their jobs this can really happen i've heard and i've had clients um, let me know that you know yeah they've recently lost their job um, I've heard that the banking industry is shedding a lot of staff when I heard that that did make me think that some new technology is being implemented that's causing people to lose their jobs something like that because Rahu is innovation as well Rahu could be we could be looking at some new technology or something like that here 
Mars, Rahu and Uranus, the other thing that this might do is it might make you want to take charge of your life. Um, might encourage you to work harder or do more or get stuff done. You might feel really productive at this time. Might cause you to start working out or change your fitness routine, something like that. That's possible as well. Clutter clearing would be a great activity. If you can just open your cupboards and see what have I not used for a couple of years and just get rid of it, feel lighter, that would be a great activity. I've got the note here, it's not a highly spiritual time. It's a very material time. There's a lot of material energies, a lot of masculine energy in the sky. Big macho masculine energy in the sky, that's what I'm seeing. So yeah, that's, that's how I'm seeing that. I've got here that the veil is more thin in the Northern Hemisphere's autumn. Autumn is a classic time of the veil being thinner, but right now it's quite a materialistic sort of a time. People are feeling very anxious out there. There's a lot of anxiety type energy about. Um, some people are feeling quite disconnected as well. I know when I had my recent illness, I had a good day or two of just feeling totally disconnected. And it was weird. And I looked at the astrology, I thought, and normally I don't. I don't look it up for myself because you can't really read for yourself. But I did, I looked it up and I was like, Oh, it's Rahu, Rahu in Aries. Rahu in Aries, for the next many months now, it is going to make some people feel a bit disconnected at times, okay? Um, you might just have bouts of that. As I was saying, you might just have bouts of that where you just feel totally disconnected. And I do believe that what's happening is that you're being rewired as a self, as who you are, okay? and. A lot of this is actually positive. If you're on a spiritual path, it's great. You're transforming in radical ways, but in really good ways. Go with it, okay? Just go with it. It's going to be good. The future's going to be really good. I, I always tell this to my clients, and especially, um, you know, I think the 30s onwards is going to be amazing because so much would have been cleared out, cleaned out, cleared out. I'm seeing kind of 27, 28, 29 even as soon as then, those years from then onwards should start to get really good. So yeah, a lot of change is happening. But hang in there. Don't worry if you feel, if you every now and then just have bouts of feeling totally disconnected or out of touch with who am I or, and, and so, what I was experiencing was that some of the things that I used to go to that would make me happy just do nothing for me. Like even listening to a piece of music or, you know, whatever it was, this was, I went through a good two, three, four days of just being totally disconnected. It was really weird, but I do think it's Rahu in Aries. And when that phase clears and passes, you'll have a good stretch of feeling good again and knowing who you are and, you know, in, enjoying life again. That always happens. That's why astrology is so good because it shows us that these weird times, they do end and we get really good times because after the weird, bad, rough time, you've done some massive clearing. You've let something go. You've evolved. You've grown, you know, so go with it. Okay. And trust, trust that better times are ahead. It's always better, always better. All right, guys, I think we are good now to start on the mini reports. Are you ready? Those of you who are going to join me through the whole zodiac, are you ready? Let's do this. We've got a lot to cover. I'm going to try and be efficient today. Let's see how I go. I'm rolling up my sleeves and everything. All right, let's see. <laughs> Aries, Aries, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now we are going to take a look at this big Mars-Rahu-Uranus conjunction. I think I have talked about this before. We've got that at the very start of August. I think I have talked about this one for you before, but what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at Mars stepping into Taurus. Okay, and where is that happening for you? Now this is big energy, big energy to get things done. Okay, and that's going to be the focus. So we've got Mars in Taurus in your second house from 11th August onwards. We're also going to have the Sun in Leo in your fifth house from the 17th 
August onwards. And the reason I'm talking about these two is because Mars is going to cast his fourth aspect onto the sun. Okay, so with Mars in Taurus in the second house, definitely be careful how you speak to family members. That one, you just got to say less, you know, you might have to bite your tongue or just not say it. Uh, if you can kind of think before you speak, that's always a helpful thing that it's going to be that kind of month. Definitely take care as well how you speak to bosses at work and or your employees or your children. Okay, we've got Sun in Leo in the fifth house there, Mars casting his aspect onto that Sun of yours. So this is good energy actually for you to lead at a new level okay this is good for you this this is going to be quite nice um, aggression could be a little bit on the high side uh, so that could be reflected back to you by somebody else and that could be reflected back to you by say for example we've got that son in leo in the fifth that could be a boss it could be someone at work Who's reflecting that energy back to you but on the whole Aries this is this is good energy for you to step up your leadership skills now there's an ideological clash happening okay this is Jupiter's fifth aspect from your 12th house onto Venus in your fourth house so I'm seeing that there could be some kind of clash you might not see eye to eye with someone and this could be to do with family members this could especially be to do with your mother you just might not see eye to eye with her for whatever reason and it's funny because both of you might be right okay so it's not like there's one of you that's wrong and could be that mother she may not communicate that she's not too happy but there, there could be some energy within her there's some there's something there with mother possibly if we take a look at the full moon the full moon is happening on the 12th of August in Capricorn Dhanishta Nakshatra. Now this is a full moon that is really close to Saturn and this is all happening in your 10th house. So you might have some great realizations about how to structure your whole life. This includes work, this includes family, but there could be some truths that come to light as well regarding work, co-workers, your bosses, some truth will become known to you or there's going to be something that you understand it could even be just at a subconscious level as well now there's a new moon happening 27th august leo maga nakshatra in your fifth house this is a beautiful new moon for you guys this is, could be a time where you conceive a baby if you want to become pregnant so it's a good time to be trying for that so there's also a really good time for you to get creative and see if you now I have a little I don't have it around me otherwise I'd show you I have a tiny little journal that I take with me to the cafe but like yeah basically you might want to take a pen with you and jot down any insights ideas you know creative downloads because that could be quite prominent around the 27th of August so look out for that Aries but Aries it's looking like a good month for you on the whole the energies are, are nice here with your uh, Mars and Sun as long as you just take care of your speech be careful how you speak to people that's that's all you have to do there but otherwise it's it's looking it's looking like a month where you can take advantage of some of that some of that powerful well hopefully some of that powerful you know energy in the lead up to the 11th August there you're going to have Mars in your own house so you might physically feel good and be able to get quite a bit done so Aries thank you so much for stopping by and we are now going to welcome Taurus Taurus welcome thank you so much for joining we're going to take a look at this big Mars energy Mars in Taurus that's really what I want to take a look at in this episode so we've got Mars stepping into Taurus in your ascendant wow yeah this is you this is all about you so this is 11th August onwards okay Mars is going to be in your sign and this is this is huge so we've got that energy there we've got Sun in Leo in the fourth house 
14th August onwards. Now I just want to double check one thing on your chart very quickly. Yes, I've got that right. Okay, Sun in Leo, fourth house, 17th August onwards. So what you're going to find is that when the Sun steps into Leo, Mars Mars energy, that fourth aspect, will touch the sun, okay? So we're looking at your ascendant, we're looking at your fourth house. So this is all about leadership needed at home, okay? Your leadership is going to be needed at home in some way, okay? So you can plan and prepare for this now. What role do you want to play? And it would be great and ideal, you've got the energy for it, to play the role of the leader. You can really lead the way. You can light up a better way of doing things for your family members, okay? So I've got the note here, can you strategize or say, see new ways forward for family life or for certain family members? You know, this could be to do with where you live. This could be to do with what's next. Are you planning some kind of big move? Are you planning on changing something about where you live or how your family is set up or and this could be quite big this could be quite strategic this could be you've got family members in different cities but you all want to move to one place this could even be that kind of thing and there's something about you playing a role in this and you being quite strategic taking the leadership position and making something happen for the family okay you've got the energy here to do it now there's an ideological clash that could be happening and this is due to Jupiter and Venus. So Jupiter's fifth aspect from the 11th house is going to touch Venus in your third house. So there could be something, some kind of ideological clash in your friendship circle. This could also be to do with your siblings. This could be to do with peers at work, people at your work, that kind of thing. And the funny thing is both you and your friend are right. I'm not particularly seeing that either of you are wrong, but there's some clash here. Okay, a clash of truths maybe, I'm not sure. Now there's a full moon happening, 12th August, Capricorn, Danishta Nakshatra. This full moon is very close to Saturn and it's all happening in your ninth house. Now I'm going to interpret this as being you're going to see something with new eyes and it's to do with your own inner authority. You're going to be radically honest about your own inner authority. So you, you, you'll be able to see how much in charge of your own life you are or how much you've used that freedom to date, right? You'll be able to see where you are still dependent. Perhaps you're dependent on validation or approval from certain authority figures, parents typically, right? Uh, but authority figures or people around you, you'll be able to see a lot. Okay, it's a great time of awareness and awakening. And just through seeing that and really honestly seeing it and taking it in, you will start to, it will change. Okay, when we're really truthful with ourselves and with what we see, it's amazing how things just start because you learnt the lesson when you see it and you really understand it. Something can shift. Okay, so I kind of get the sense that something can transform for you at this time. This could be quite a transformational full moon. Now there is a new moon happening 27th August, Leo Magha Nakshatra in your fourth house. So you might get some new inspiration regarding your home life, okay, all that leadership energy that's going into your home or making some change or, or doing something uh, is also going to spark new ideas, new inspiration and you might want to plant a seed. Okay, on the 27th of August, plant a seed for a new home or, you know, and it could even be something really material. We've got all this material energy in the sky right now, you know, so I mean, you could be wanting a new home, a new car. Um, new material type things but equally it could be something strategic about you know, planning the future about bringing the family together or indeed you know <laughs> living in separate places or whatever it is but there will be some ideas that occur to you at this time Taurus thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome Gemini Gemini welcome thank you so much for joining 
Now we're going to take a look at this incredible Mars energy. Mars is going to step into Taurus, okay, and he's going to be there for a long time. We'll probably talk about uh, Mars again, you know, in the future, especially when he retrogrades. So we will check in with Mars again, but for now, Mars is going to be in Taurus in your 12th house from the 11th of August onwards. And then we're going to have Sun in Leo in your third house from 17th August onwards. And the reason I'm bringing up these two is because Mars is going to cast his aspect on the Sun. So when the Sun moves into Leo in the third house, 17th August onwards, Mars energy is going to be touching the Sun. So I wanted to explore this. Now the Sun is really strong and passionate and inspired here in the third house. You can achieve a lot work-wise. This can be good for attracting attention. Okay, This can be good for getting a new job. This can be good for all that kind of thing. This is you standing out, you being seen in your network circle. Now Mars is a little bit restless there in the 12th and by aspect he may aggravate the sun. This is not the best energy coming in from Mars here. So try to stay with your sun energy and shine and you know do your thing and it's great for work but equally be a bit humble, play it a bit cool as well, because some of that Mars energy might come and um, aggravate things, or there could be some situation or something like that. Now there could also be an ideological clash happening, and this is to do with Jupiter and Venus. So Jupiter's fifth aspect from the 10th house onto Venus in your second house. So I'm gonna read this as some kind of ideological clash with family or bosses at work. This is an interesting one because we've got Jupiter in the 10th, we've got Venus in the second. So this could be, maybe it's, there's something about your family not approving of what you do work-wise or, or some move that you're wanting to make at work or something you're doing at work. It's like there's some, there's not, two aren't seeing eye to eye particularly. So maybe your family are judging how you are at work or something like that. Equally, it could be your workplace is judging something to do with you and your family or something along those lines. So that could be quite interesting. Then we've got the full moon happening, 12th August, Capricorn Dhanishta Nakshatra. All of this big, beautiful full moon energy is, is happening very close to Saturn there. Saturn's in the, you know, in the vicinity there. So this is all happening from your eighth house. What I've got here for you for this full moon is that you might gain some really big insights about shared assets uh, or family life, but this could be some deep, secret or hidden truth or something connected with the family lines your ancestral lines even maybe who knows um, but there's some deep hidden insights about family or you know the sharing of assets or the enmeshment of relationships or something along these lines something will be known to you uh, something will become very clear at this time there's a new moon happening 27th august Leo Marga Nakshatra is happening in your third house. This is quite lovely. So you might get some inspiration regarding your career. You might get some ideas about forward momentum or steps that you would like to take. Uh, and you might also come to some new understanding of what really excites you work-wise. Okay, and it's, it is a new moon, so it is a good time to wish for something. And at this time, I mean, you could wish for a new career or next career step to be shown to you. Equally, it is happening in your third house. You could wish for some healing to do with family relationships or siblings or um, some kind of healing to do with friends as well. You could also wish to meet your soul tribe. You could call in your soul tribe, you know, and... Yeah, I think a lot of people have been quite heavily locked down and haven't been too social in person, but that's starting to change now and people are calling in their soul tribe and people are wanting to meet up in person. So let's all wish for some more of that, shall we? But Gemini, things are looking quite good. Your sun is sensational, so enjoy that energy there. We are now going to welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now we're going to take a look 
at this big masculine Mars energy, right? That's going to be in Taurus. Now for you, that's happening in your 11th house. So this is from the 11th of August onwards. And we're also going to have the sun in Leo in your second house from the 17th of August onwards. And the reason I'm bringing up these two in particular is because Mars is going to cast aspect onto the sun. And I just wanted to see how that dynamic would play out. Now Mars is really brilliantly placed there in your 11th house. This is brilliant energy to bring in new money, uh, new contacts, new ideas, to really go for it. You know, and you can have this for quite a long time actually. Wow, this is great. Lucky you, Cancer. Okay, a lot of growth here is possible for you. Now the sun is money focused, um, could be drying up finances there in your second. That is a thing that could be happening, but equally it's energized by Mars. I feel like sun is going to be quite good here and the two of these will work together quite well, I think, to bring some good money your way. So I'm excited about that for you, Cancer. This is great. Now there is an ideological clash happening in the sky this month. So this is Jupiter's fifth aspect from your ninth house is going to be on Venus in your first house. All right, so this could be an ideological clash with authority figures, with father. You know, um, if dad isn't around or isn't alive, it could be just that version of him that, that you have in your mind. You know, perhaps there are still. Um, still some ways in which you're hoping for approval or something along these lines. It could be to do with, with authority like figures. This could also be to do with what you want to do. So you might want to do something, but there's something holding you back and there's some kind of ideological clash. And it's not like either of you are in the wrong or any of that. No, you, you're both probably right kind of thing is what I'm seeing here. So that's just something to become aware of through the awareness. You might see the dynamic at play and you might just be able to release it or it'll dissolve through the awareness. Okay. So if there's some pattern that you pick up, it's the deep awareness, the true understanding that you being honest about it, you being real with yourself, all of that works to just dissolve the pattern, right? Dissolve or release. You won't need the lesson anymore. I feel like there's some lesson here. So that is something that, you know, across this month, if you just explore that relationship that you have with authority or with father, something might release there for you. There is a full moon happening 12th August Capricorn Danisha Nakshatra. Now this full moon is really close to Saturn and this is all happening for you. Wow. In your seventh house. So there could be some radical truth or understanding that will become clear to you in your marriage uh, or with your work partner or business partner or any of that. Someone who's close to you at work, but definitely in your marriage, in your relationship, or if you're single, this is just to do with how you do relationships. And this ties in really well with the Jupiter Venus energy where we're looking at authority and we're looking at father there. Okay. So there's some amazing soul work that can be done by you this month, cancer, where you really become aware of dynamics that are held deep within you that have possibly been holding you back for no reason at all. Okay. Because you very often, especially with father or something like that, you know, um, whether he's around or not, it doesn't matter. He may not know how we feel, you know, uh, our ideas about him, you know, we, we project so much, don't we? Now there's a new moon happening, um, 27th August, Leo Maga Nakshatra happening in your second house. So this is a really great time to plant new seeds for wealth for big money to come in, right? And, or, you know, if you've got some debt that you need cleared or something else, you know, something like that, you know, maybe you just want to wish for big money to come in and, and sort all of that out. So it's a really great time on the 27th of August to plant that seed cancer. But I'm loving this Mars energy for you. You are one of the lucky three signs 
to have Mars so brilliantly placed. I'm just checking on the time. We're doing fine. All right. Well, thank you so much, Cancer. And we are now going to welcome Leo. Leo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, we're going to take a look at this incredible masculine energy in the sky. We've got Mars making a big, big shift there into Taurus. This is significant because Mars is going to be there for a really long time. So this is quite important to take a look at. Now you're going to have some big energy here to get things done. I'm quite excited for you. Uh, you've got Mars in Taurus in the 10th house, 11th August onwards. And we've got the Sun in Leo in first house uh, from the 17th August onwards. And what I really wanted to take a look at here was Mars's aspect on the Sun, which is going to happen. We're going to feel that 17th August onwards, but we're kind of preparing for that all month. So the sun, when the sun gets into your first house, 17th August onwards, that could tire you out physically. I would say take care of your health. Don't overdo it. Um, Mars in the 10th, this is brilliant energy. You're very lucky, actually, Leo, that you've got Mars here in the 10th. This is great for you. You're going to be eager to get a lot done work-wise. You're going to be able to put your head down and, you know, and get a lot done. This is this is really nice energy. I'm, I'm liking the look of all this for you, Leo. This is great. Because Sun and Mars are strong for you. They get on. Now there's an ideological clash happening in the sky. So this is between Jupiter and Venus. And this is Jupiter's fifth aspect. Apologies about that. The camera got cut. I think I was talking about the fifth aspect. Was I? This is Jupiter... Casting aspect onto Venus, this is the ideological clash. So we've got Jupiter's fifth aspect is from your eighth house, going to be on Venus in your twelfth house. Okay, so there could be some kind of ideological clash between family members, extended family, or your spouse. And it could also be to do with spiritual beliefs, what, what you believe spiritually or how you believe things should be done. And it's funny because it's an ideological clash. It's kind of like each side, they're correct. Yet, yet the people aren't seeing eye to eye or there's some kind of clash here. There is a full moon happening on the 12th of August in Capricorn Dhanishta Nakshatra. Now this is close to Saturn, this full moon. Okay, This is happening for you in your sixth house. So you might discover some kind of deep hidden truth uh, or just deep truth. It doesn't need to be hidden. This is um, sixth house, so it doesn't need to be hidden. But a deep truth about something at work or in your career or could be to do with competitors okay people that you compete with as well there might be some deep truth that comes to light uh, and that that could be very informative very useful to know now there's a new moon happening 27th august leo maka nakshatra in your first house this is your new moon leo this is all about you and this is a, about your whole life so this is a great time to plant new seeds for all the things that you want to achieve in life. What do you dream of? What would you love to see happen in your life? You've got a real license for some fantasy thinking. Go for it. Absolutely go for it. Dream big. What do you want to see happen? And just enjoy that. Just enjoy the dream. Don't worry about how you're going to get there. Let the universe take care of it. The universe will show you the steps. Ask the universe as part of your dream. Say to the universe, look, make this easy for me and show me how, what steps do I need to take? And you will be guided step by step by step. I promise. That's, I, I'm working this intuition tutorial, Leo. I hope to get that out soon because that is very much about, you know, everybody's got intuition. Everybody's got the ability to get their own answers, to figure it out for themselves and to just take life one tiny step at a time you'll be shown every single step all right thank you so much for tuning i'm loving your mars in the 10th you, it's great great energy you're going to enjoy that for a while leo so enjoy that thank you so much for tuning in we are now going to welcome virgo virgo welcome thank you so much for joining now we're going to take a look at this big masculine energy in the sky. It's Mars. Mars is stepping into Taurus. This is something brand new for all of us. So for you, you're going to have Mars in Taurus in your ninth house. This is from 11th August onwards. And then we're going to have the Sun in Leo, 12th house for you, 17th August onwards. 
And I want to look at these two because Mars is going to be casting his fourth aspect and the Sun's going to receive that from the 17th August onwards. And that's what's making this month quite unique. So Sun could be encountering more expenses than normal. That's Sun in the 12th house there. Sun could also be making it really difficult for you to sleep. Okay, but don't worry, Sun is going to pass through. It's just going to be for a short while. That's not going to last too long. Now Mars in the ninth is frustrated. Okay, Mars in the ninth is frustrated at a lack of progress and could really challenge your Sun. So that could you know, challenge you, it could make things difficult, it could make your sleep a, a little bit more uncomfortable actually, that Mars energy there. Mars isn't, isn't um, so ideally placed, but it's not too bad if you just want to get things done at work and if you don't want to have any um, imperial entanglements, right? So, so stay away from arguments with bosses and things like that, or arguments with authority or, you know, all that kind of thing. Um, then Mars should be okay. Now there's an ideological clash happening in the sky and that's due to Jupiter's fifth aspect from your seventh house onto Venus in your 11th house. Okay, now this could be to do with this could be to do with a spouse or business partner and it could be to do with work colleagues or older siblings or something like that. But there's something where, say for example, your spouse and then there are some friends in the network circle, could be work friends, but could be older siblings or something like that. The two of you aren't seeing eye to eye, something like this, okay? That could be happening now, but it's not like either of you are wrong. No, both of you are probably in the right, but there's there's some ideological clash here. Uh, there's a full moon happening, 12th August, Capricorn, Danisha, Nakshatra. Now the full moon is really close to Saturn, okay? And this activity is happening in your fifth house. So one of the things I see here is that it's a really great time to recognize how far you've come. This is one of those full moons where you get to really look and you get to see, wow, I've, I've created a lot or I've done a lot or I've achieved a lot and look at how your creative skills or your leadership skills have really matured or how far you've come. This could also be a really good time if you've got children to be totally honest with them about something and perhaps share with them something that you feel, if you're feeling like it's a good time to share, you know, this could be a time to recognize that your kids are really mature and able to handle something. Uh, and it could be a time to express the fullness of your feelings, you know. That could be a thing. There's a new moon happening, 27th August, Leo Maga Nakshatra in your 12th house. All right, now this is a great new moon. This could be where you are more psychic than ever. So keep a little journal where you want to jot down ideas, okay? Because you might get a lot of ideas, a lot of inspiration, a lot of things from behind the veil. You could be more psychic at this time. But you could also plant seeds because we have a new moon here. You can plant seeds for what you wish for. You could wish for how you want to grow spiritually, how you'd like to develop, you know, how you would like to what you'd like to let go of, you know? And um, yeah, that's, that's always a good thing to do. That's the best spiritual work to do, isn't it? Let, letting go of the things uh, that hold us back, you know? But Virgo, it is looking like a pretty good month for you. Uh, the only thing is just take care about the lack of sleep that could possibly happen. But I don't see that as being anything major. Just keep a good book by your side. That'll be fine. All right, thank you so much for tuning in, Virgo. We are now gonna welcome Libra. Libra, thank you so much for joining. Now, there's a lot of big masculine energy in the sky. We've got Mars moving into Taurus. This is big news for everybody. Mars moving into Taurus for you in your eighth house. This is 11th August onwards. We've also got the sun in Leo, fantastic, in your 11th house. I love that. So that's 17th August onwards. Now the sun is beautifully placed, so your sun will be massively empowered to achieve wealth opportunities, to network, to meet the right people, to get jobs, get clients, all that kind of thing. Now Mars in the eighth could be financially focused at this time, could be sorting out shared assets, 
but your son is really empowered. Your son is really able to achieve a lot. So that'll be sort of 17th August onwards, possibly to about mid-month uh, September. It's great energy. Now there's some ideological clash that's happening in the sky. I talk about this for each sign. Um, now for you, this is Jupiter's fifth aspect from your sixth house onto Venus in your 10th house. So this is definitely work focus. This is to do with work. So while you're at work, you might discover and it, it might be you, you might be in the center of this, or you might even be observing just two parties at play that think totally differently, and, and, but it's causing a clash, but it's like it's not like either one is particularly more right than the other, is one of the things I'm seeing here. So see if you can see what that's all about. Now there's a full moon happening, 12th August, Capricorn Danishta Nakshatra, this is all close to Saturn and this is happening in your fourth house. When the moon is so close to Saturn like this, we know that it's about honesty, it's about truth. So there's some truth that's going to be revealed in your family or to do with your mother or relationship with your mother. And there's a new moon happening 27th August, Leo Maga Nakshatra in your 11th house. So this is a really great time to plant new seeds for all the dreams that matter to you. This is beautiful. Okay, so whatever it is that you wish for, whatever your hopes and dream, whatever your hopes, dreams and wishes are, you can wish for those now. Okay, so what, what do you want most? What does your heart long for? What, what do you really want? And you know, this is a, a bit of license for some fantasy thinking. Do it, enjoy it. Dream big, dream all the stuff that you really wanna see happening. Plant the seed, let it go, and then carry on with your days. Do your work and let the universe bring it to you. All right, Libra, so I'm excited for that new moon of yours there. And I'm excited for, definitely excited for that sun in Leo uh, in your 11th house there. That's fantastic energy. All right, we are now going to welcome Scorpio. Scorpio, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now we've got some big masculine energy in the sky this month. We've got Mars moving into Taurus in your seventh house. This is the 11th August onwards. And then we've got Sun in Leo in your 10th house, 17th August onwards. And I wanted to take a look at these two because Mars is going to be casting his aspect on the Sun. And that's quite a particular flavor for the month of August. So Sun is well placed to achieve. Brilliant there in the 10th house. Sun does beautifully there. It's, it'll be a good time for you to stay work focused and you should be able to enjoy work, get a lot done, perhaps even be seen or recognized, okay, sun in the 10th there. Now Mars in the 7th is really looking to influence other people. This is great if you're a social media person, you might find that you get more views, all that kind of thing. What I would say though about Mars in the 7th is be careful of how you speak with your spouse, okay? Be careful of your relationship. Um, this is definitely a, a good time to do more work or invest more of your time in work or be busy at work, okay? Don't uh, you know, make too many plans with the partner, with the spouse. Um, better to be a bit more work focused, just, just for this time. They're gonna be great transits for love later. Now there's an ideological clash happening in the sky. Uh, for you, this is Jupiter's fifth aspect from the fifth house onto Venus in your ninth house. So this is a clash of authority. This is a clash of, you know, I, I believe it should be like this, but there's something else in your life that believes it should be like that. Um, this could be at work. This could be in your family. So if you're a parent, this could be to do with your child. Equally, this could be to do with your dad, okay? So, uh, and you as the child. So there's something, two parties are not seeing eye to eye, um, and it's not like either is wrong, in the wrong or any of that. There's just two truths that are clashing, something along these lines. Now we've got a full moon happening, 12th August, Capricorn Danishta Nakshatra, this is happening, this full moon is, is close to Saturn here, so we know this is about honesty, we know this is about truth. For you, this is happening in your third house. So a truth might be revealed about friends, about siblings, about cousins, about peers at your work, people at your level, right? Some kind of truth might become known at this time. 
Then we've got a new moon happening 27th August, Leo Maga Nakshatra in your 10th house. So this is a great time to wish for the dream career, okay? What would you love to be doing? And maybe you are doing something that you love, but how would you like it to expand? Maybe you need some more help or you need equipment or you know you want to grow or whatever that is so wish for the next stepping stone to be shown to you wish to be guided to the next part of your path Scorpio it's looking like a really good month for you I'm loving your sun energy I think you've got some great energy there and Mars you know especially from a social media point of view um, that could attract some good attention there so Thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome Sagittarius. Sagittarius welcome, thank you so much for joining and we've got some big masculine energy in the sky. We've got Mars, okay, Mars is about to enter Taurus and this is some big energy here. So for you this is Mars in your sixth house from 11th August onwards. And we've got Sun in Leo in your ninth house from 17th August onwards. Now the reason I want to look at the two of these is because Mars is going to be casting his fourth aspect onto the Sun. Sun is going to receive that energy from 17th August onwards. So this is really what's making August a unique month. Now the Sun could be challenged by authority at this time. Yeah, this is quite possible. Sun in Leo in the ninth. There could be some kind of challenge to do with authority or to do with father, father figure, concept of father in, in your own subconscious. But Mars in the sixth is really, really great energy. Wow, and you're going to have that for a long time. That's amazing. All right, so you're one of the lucky three, Sagittarius, is going to get beautiful Mars energy. You've got great Mars here. Mars in the sixth is going to be fantastic for your work, for getting things done. If you're involved in a legal dispute, this could be really good energy for that. We are going to have a retrograde, so it could be that your court case gets extended or something like that as well. So yeah but equally Mars is on your side Mars is is really good here really strong here what I would say is definitely take care in court cases um, if you are involved in one now there's also an ideological clash happening this month and this is due to Jupiter's fifth aspect from your fourth house on Venus in your eighth house so I'm seeing this to do with family members this is just something to do with family especially mother or your spouse okay or perhaps your mother and your spouse aren't seeing eye to eye it could be to do with in-laws it could be all this kind of thing some kind of ideological clash it's not like one is more right than the other it's just that there's some something people aren't seeing eye to eye there's a full moon happening 12th august capricorn danishta nakshatra the full moon is close to saturn this is going to be all about honesty and truth and this is happening in your second house so some deep truth might come to light regarding your family and or your family finances or shared assets or something like that big generational wealth but definitely it just could be about family members you know there's something's going to come to light something's going to make a whole lot of sense okay um, there's a new moon happening 27th august leo maga nakshatra in your ninth house this is a really great time to wish for a boost to your own inner authority your own ability to take charge of your own life okay so this is kind of personal growth that you're wishing for where you are more in charge of your own life it's like you are really feeling your hands on the wheel you know you're taking charge you're wishing for more of that energy on the new moon on the 27th of August there but Sagittarius I'm really excited for your Mars in the sixth that is going to be some good energy there so take care Sagittarius thank you so much for joining and we are now going to welcome Capricorn Capricorn welcome thank you so much for joining now there's some big Mars energy in the sky Mars is going to move into Taurus in your fifth house on the 11th of August onwards and we're going to have Sun in Leo eighth house 17th August onwards so if we're taking a look at the Sun here Sun could be lighting up something to do with shared assets and or something to do with family in-laws that kind of thing 
Mars in the fifth there is a little bit stressed at work. Okay, so be very careful with how you speak to your teammates at work, um, your staff, if you have staff, or your children, okay? Um, Mars energy could even be aggravating the sun a little bit possibly as well. So just take care with this Mars energy. It is quite strong in, in your chart. Um, ideological clash, there's an ideological clash in the sky. Uh, this is dear to Jupiter's fifth aspect from your third house, which is gonna be on Venus in your seventh. Okay, so this could be to do with perhaps a friend's opinion on your relationship, right? So we've got the friends in the, where are we? Yeah, third house there, and we've got the seventh house, which is your partner. So, or it could be a partner's opinion of your friend or something along those lines. There's something where perhaps two parties are correct, but they aren't quite seeing eye to eye. Um, you know, Venus is a little bit uncomfortable there too. One party might be a little bit uncomfortable. So it could be this kind of thing it could be playing out. Now there's a full moon happening 12th August, Capricorn, Dhanishta Nakshatra. This full moon is close to Saturn. So this is happening for you in your first house. This is you, Capricorn, of course it is. Uh, some deep truths are going to come to light for your whole life, okay? Or that will illuminate something that really could have a massive impact. Um, and sometimes we're not even consciously aware of what these things are. I know, and I've had astrological things happen to me, one of my nodal returns. It was only some years later that I was able to see, oh, that was the time that my whole life changed. You know, so even though I say that this, there could be some deep truth that impacts your whole life, but you might observe that day and be like, well, nothing happened. <laughs> I know, um, it's like that. I've, I've gone through things where, you know, I didn't realize it at the time, but then when I look back and I look astrologically, I'm like, oh yeah, that was the day that, you know, everything really happened, or that was the time, or that was the year, you know. So um, you might observe this full moon and discover that nothing really happens. But equally, for some of you, there could be some deep truths. Something could really make sense at this time. Now there's a new moon happening, 27th August, Leo Maga Nakshatra. This is happening in your eighth house. So you could be quite psychic at this time. Uh, it's a great time to keep a little journal, write down your ideas, if you're getting ideas or dreams or any of that. It's a great time to wish for your spiritual gifts to open. Okay, so if there's some gift, maybe, and maybe there's some gift that you are actively working with or on, maybe you are a light worker, you do use your intuition, or you know you tune in, you've got your psychic powers, you've got your gifts, but you want them to open up a bit more, or you want to be shown, okay, how do I tap this even more? This is a really good new moon uh, through which you might be able to strengthen your natural gifts. So Capricorn, I'm wishing you well. Thank you so much for joining. I just want to see what is really good here for you. Do you know, I'm liking the moon situation here for you because and the sun's looking pretty good too there in the eighth. I mean, one thing about the sun in the eighth, that could be a little bit draining health-wise as well, okay? That's 17th August onwards. But I'm liking your, your moon uh, situation here. This is really good, really, really good. So thank you so much for joining Capricorn. And we are now gonna welcome Aquarius. Aquarius, welcome, thank you so much for joining. I'm looking at the time. I always look at the time with you, don't I? Um, but there it is. So it's because it's going to cut out. Do you know what? I think I'll just start a new cut memory card. Hi there, Aquarius. I'm back. All right. So now we've got some big masculine energy in the sky. And this is Mars moving into Taurus here. Okay. Uh, Taurus is for you. It's your fourth house. This is 11th August onwards. And we're looking at the sun as well in Leo in your seventh house. This is the 17th August onwards. The reason I want to look at these two is because Mars is going to be casting aspect onto Saturn and that's making this month quite unique. So the sun being placed in the seventh house, 17th August onwards, yeah. This could be draining a little bit on your health possibly. This could tire you out if you get tired, if you need to rest 
take a break, don't work too hard. Um, one thing the sun in this position does is it might help your empathy. It might really help you see things from the other person's point of view. This might make you more empathetic. Okay, this could be quite a nice transit here. But the thing is, we've got Mars in the fourth. Mars could be casting some rather stressful, restless energy onto the sun. Okay, because Mars in the fourth, Mars is not too happy to be there. Um, so Mars could be restless at home and there's something about this Mars energy and it's possibly, you know, it could be, I mean, one example is, you know, if, if things aren't great in your relationship with your mother, that could be being projected onto your relationship. Okay, so that's just one possibility. There's lots of possibilities how this could play out. Uh, but that's just one of them. So, but the, if, if you're in a relationship or not, there's something about Mars energy coming at you, okay? There's some stressful, restless energy, and that's from the 17th August onwards. There is also an ideological clash happening in the sky at this time. So we've got Jupiter's fifth aspect from your second house is gonna be on Venus in your sixth house. This is family opinion on your work or what you do for your career, Equally, this could be your career having some opinion on your family or something along those lines. But basically, there are two parties at play and there's something where two are not seeing eye to eye, but it's not like either party is wrong, in the wrong, if you know what I mean. There's just some clash that's going on. There's a full moon happening 12th of August, Capricorn Dhanishta Nakshatra. This is happening close to Saturn. Okay, so we know that this is going to be about the truth or some form of honesty is, is going to happen here. And um, this ha is happening for you in your 12th house. So some deep spiritual truths might come to light at this time. And this could be quite personal. This could be just to do with you. This could be the kind of thing where you learn something quite deep and profound about yourself spiritually and how you have been um, you know perhaps ways that you've dealt with life something will become clear and I feel like I feel like this could be quite powerful and really positive for you in that when you learn that how, how you've always done things maybe maybe you don't need to do it that way maybe you know something Mm, will come to light here where you'll recognize, wow, I, I can do things a whole different way and I can be a lot easier with myself and I can be a lot happier and a lot, you know, life doesn't have to be so hard. And you might recognize something that you've been doing uh, that's been holding you back or, you know, causing, causing some difficulties here. This could be a really beautiful full moon for you. And there's a new moon happening 27th August, Leo Maga Nakshatra in your seventh house. So if you are in a relationship, then you can wish for healing that please, you know, heal me and my partner. Uh, equally, if you are single, you can wish for a partner at this time. You can plant a seed and ask the universe to bring you someone that you can be madly in love with. How amazing Aquarius would that be? So I'm liking look at this month you let's take a look what do I like the best do you know I, I just like uh, Capricorn I was saying I like the moon situation for you I think that's really lovely energy there and I think you can enjoy that quite a bit I think the only thing here is yeah Mars in the fourth might make you a bit restless at times if that's the case well just you know a walk in nature can solve that pretty quickly so thank you so much for tuning in Aquarius and we are now going to welcome Pisces. Pisces welcome, thank you so much for joining. Now some big masculine energy in the sky, Mars is making his shift, Mars is going to be shifting into Taurus in your third house and this is from the 11th August onwards and we've got the Sun in Leo in your sixth house from the 17th of August onwards. So the sun transits beautifully through this place. That's the 17th August onwards. This is gonna be making you shine at work. Um, you know, you attract new work. If you're in a legal case, things should go really well. Uh, all this kind of thing. So Mars is in a very winning sort of a spot. You can win clients, all that kind of thing. Oh, how fantastic. Yes, and you've got Mars in the third. This is beautiful. Uh, Pisces, I think you've got the best 
situation of all the signs I've just read. This is great. So you're going to have Mars here in the third house. You're one of the lucky three signs that's got Mars so beautifully placed. You're going to have this Mars energy for months. Okay, so great. This is wonderful. This is big confidence. This is big ability to get ahead at work. This is big ability to create, to do. And when there's that retrograde, you know, you have the opportunity to go over things again and, you know, sort anything you miss. So this is wonderful. Not only do you get such a long transit with Mars being here, you get the retrograde as well, which I think is going to be really good. Now there's an ideological clash happening in the sky that I've been talking about for all signs. And for you, this is Jupiter's fifth aspect on your first house, uh, from your first house onto Venus in your fifth house. So Jupiter's fifth aspect from your first house onto Venus in your fifth house. This could be an ideological clash with your children. Okay, if you've got children, perhaps you're not seeing eye to eye on something. Um, could also be to do with your employees if you're a manager or something like that. But yeah, or it could be to do with the young generation, you know, something like this. But there's some kind of ideological clash where there are two truths and, and two people holding two truths that just aren't seeing eye to eye. It's that kind of thing. There's a full moon happening 12th August, Capricorn Danisha Nakshatra. This is all happening close to Saturn. So we know this is to do, to do with truth, honesty, all that. And this is happening in your 11th house. So you're going to be able to, I like this full moon for you Pisces, because this is one of those full moons where you'll be able to reflect on and celebrate how far you've come in life. Okay, so it's a really good time for you to just enjoy where you are and recognize that where you are is someone that you somewhere that you possibly aspired to be several years ago or 10 years ago you know um, good time to celebrate how far you've come definitely and we've got the new moon here 27th August Leo Maga Nakshatra this is happening for you in your sixth house so this is a great time to plant seeds for your dream career and when you're planting the seed ask the universe to show you and guide you to the next steps to show you okay just 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 guide me you know and and once you've planted the seed let it go let the universe take care of it for you it'll do the how and it'll even tell you what your next steps are it really will we've just got to trust that's our part in the game we've got to trust that the next step will be shown to us when we're when we're ready to take it so pisces i'm loving this for you we're finishing on a high look at that we're finishing on mars in the third right you're one of the lucky three signs that's getting a terrific uh mars situation here for many months okay so this is really 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 good and i want to thank anyone who has watched till the end thank you so much everyone and i also want to encourage everyone to subscribe everyone to hit the like button and as well to leave a comment as well because my viewings from last month took a big nosedive and that's because i wasn't well and um oh i had such a when i recorded the audio only episode last month after each one i had my glass of water and i was pretty much coughing out a lung and i had to stop it and then do a serious editing on my computer afterwards whereas today i don't have to do that kind of editing i'm all good i'm all recovered and you'll be seeing me on these videos more often so thank you so much to everybody who supports this channel and who keeps it going thank you so much with all my heart i love doing this work i feel very lucky that i get to do this work every day and yeah i look forward to seeing you next time i'll be seeing you on the next episode of my troubleshooting series so please do check that out also if you would like to book a session please do book i have put new and more sessions into the system so there's plenty uh, of time to book sessions I want to thank you so much and I look forward to seeing you next time.